Let's amplify our knowledge of objects. Objects are a grouping together of boxes. Now, if you think about a variable, a variable is a big box. But you know that you can put lots of smaller boxes within that box. And that's exactly what we've done. So what we've done is we've created a big box, which is the variable. And then we've created an object. This has lots of smaller boxes and they're all grouped together. Now those smaller boxes have keys. And what we need to do is grab a key, target that key, and it will open that box specifically. Because if you don't, then you'll get the whole thing returned, which usually in our application, that is quite useless. What we want to do is be able to target a specific box via its key and pull out that specific value. Then that makes this very, very powerful indeed. And so that's what we have. We have a grouping together of smaller boxes and each one of those boxes has its own unique key. That's very important. So now that we have established and really clarified objects, let's further continue our understanding of objects so we can build more powerful applications. So first of all, I need to create a variable, a large box on the window object. And that box can then be referenced and we can call it back later in our program. So I'm going to create a variable, give that variable a name, obj, and then I'm going to assign a value to that variable. And we want to open and close the parentheses, which is an object literal. We're literally creating an object by popping in these opening and closing parentheses. And then I can say key name and I can define or assign a value to this property, this smaller box. And I can just say, hello, simple as that. And I'll only define one property here. So now that I've done that, I want to then add onto this object. And you will find that the more complex applications you build, the more you'll find you want to add new properties and also methods to an object. Now we're not going to look at methods just yet, but it's pretty basic. All we need to do is target the main box, which stores our object. And then we need to come up with a name. So let's go ahead and say added. So I'm trying to request a key called added. Now, if I was to leave it there, nothing would happen. What you'd actually get returned is null or undefined. It's saying I had a look at that object and unfortunately I didn't find that key. And so it returned undefined. It simply didn't exist. Luckily, however, it didn't error. It's not a major error in JavaScript. But if I say OBJ again, I call the main box. It didn't create a new property. So when you create a property outside, so I've already created this object. Now I want to add in a new property. What I need to do is target the box, come up with a key name, and then I want to assign a value because don't forget we are working with a little box. And just like a variable, you use the equal sign. Now when you want to assign a value within an object, so I've already pre-created this property, when the object was created. Whenever you want to assign a value there, you use the colon. However, if you are not inside these opening and closing parentheses, you always use the equal sign for assignment. Now, once I've done this, I can then assign a value. So I'll say new val and end with a semicolon because I've defined that sentence, that statement, that command, and now I hit return. So it returned the value of the new property that I've created. But if I call OBJ again, it will bring back the entire object. Let's do that. And there we go. We now have a new property created after the object was created. So we can always add properties at a later date and also methods as well. So that's really important. So that's not a problem. But what about deleting. So we've created it. Now what about deleting it? Well, it's very, very easy. You use the delete keyword and then you need to target the key you want to delete, which again, we need to tell JavaScript, ah, 
He wants that OBJ box, the one that contains our object. And then we need to specify which key we want to delete, which I shall say added. Now, when I do this and hit return, the key's gone. If it says true, it means it deleted the key. If it's false, then usually you've either not targeted a key that exists or you've tried to target something that isn't allowed to be deleted or isn't respective of the delete function. So now once I've done this and it said true, let's say OBJ again, and you'll notice it did in fact delete the key. Now this is better than setting this key to null and never using it again because even that key is taking up space it's just taking up valuable space that could be used everywhere else now granted this is tiny 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 however when it comes to extremely large functions let's say this key stored an extremely large function that took up quite a bit of memory why would you want it still sitting there why wouldn't you want to just delete that out and say look free that up i might want to maybe add in the exact same key at a later date, but right now I just want to get rid of it, just delete it out completely. So it is good to delete certain properties that you're not going to use later. Also, what you can do in JavaScript is you can loop through all of the keys within an object. And if you have a key with the value of null, well, yeah, you've got ways of dealing with that, but I'd rather just delete the key out completely so then I don't have to worry about it later on. So that's always a good reference point. Now also we have assignment operators. You saw that I used the equals sign. That means also we have all of the assignment operators that I've already shown you. You're working with a miniature box, which is just like working with a variable. It's very, very simple. So let's go ahead and I shall create another property in fact I'll change the key name property let's change that to 20 so now obj has one property key name with the value of 20 I can say obj point to the main box that contains our object and point to the miniature box inside of it which is key name now what I can do is say plus equals so don't forget, I can use this for concatenation of strings as well. And then what I can do is say plus 40. Hit return. It gives me 60 OBJ. There you go. It changed the value. So you have all of your assignment operators as well. Now, please refer back to the assignment operators lecture to again recap and go through all of the different assignment operators. And in fact, right now, what I want you to do is do that as an exercise without me showing you how to do it. I've already showed you one. Try to do all of the other numerical assignment operators or arithmetic assignment operators because that will then help you to think for yourself and go, oh, okay, I don't need to be shown everything. I can sort of have a play here and just change it. Just like I changed that variable, you can change this smaller box a smaller type of variable, a property, if you will, and you can modify it and change it. Now, on top of that, you can also have objects inside of objects. So we can think of the analogy, or you could just think about the structure of a graphics editor. You have many canvases in a graphics editor. And within those canvases, you have multiple images on those canvases. So not only do you have the canvas, the main canvas, which has a width and a height and so forth. And then also you have the images on the canvas. They're embedded within the canvas object. You also have the actual application itself, which needs to embed all of those canvases because you can have more than one canvas. So this is the point that I'm trying to get across is the fact that objects in this kind of structure makes those types of applications actually possible in JavaScript. So I'm going to, again, target my OBJ variable and say whatever's in that box, delete it out and assign a new value. 
simple as. Now I can start defining some keys. So I can say this key name is hello and it returns hello world, not a problem. But also I want to define a second property and I'm gonna say embed. Now this property contains an object. I'm going to put an object inside of an object. And remember, arrays are objects. I put arrays inside of arrays. So that means I can put objects inside of objects. So we've already sort of been exposed to this API. But however, let's just continue. So to create an object within this property, I'm again assigning a value to this mini box. And all I'm doing is opening and closing the parentheses. Again, it's an object literal. So I'm creating an object literally by defining those opening and closing parentheses. And again, the syntax follows exactly the same. There's no difference. So let's create another property inside of here. I'm gonna say level two, and it's gonna return the value of 200. We don't need to go any more complicated than that. So I have my object, here it is, hello world. And then we have embed inside of it. And you'll notice when I click on it, I get to see the properties and then also I get to see embed and expand that out. So this is really nice in the console window. And this is why I like working in the console a lot. So now what I want to do is target the main box. So we're targeting the main parent object. And then I can say dot embed. You will notice that it returns the embedded object with the key level two and the value of 200. There it is stored in that key right there. And what about accessing the level two property? Well, we say object.embed, so now we're right here. And then I'm gonna say dot level two. That's it, so you just keep adding those dots in there. And guess what, we get the value of 200. So it went from here, then it looked at the embed key, so now it's looking here. And then it said, ah, oh, there's an object inside of there. Go fetch level two. So now we're here, boom, level two. And that's it, just return the value. Really easy and really simple. And again, you don't have to write it this way. You could be very dynamic if you wanted to. And what you could do is again, use the square brackets, just like we did with the array. We kept adding those square brackets in, don't forget. Now also, what's in the square brackets is treated as JavaScript. So what it's actually gonna do here is try to call embed and level two variables, which don't exist. We need to put them into strings. And you can go ahead and actually put these strings into variables like we did last time and call those variables and it just returns a string. So it's entirely up to you what syntax you want, but usually when fetching data, you just use the dot syntax. It's nice and easy, it's less typing. Whenever you want to fetch something dynamically, then usually you pop in these square brackets. Also keys with numbers as well. So if I was to have this embed object with a key that has a number like an array, so I say, this key has the name of one, and then I assign a value, yup. How do we access that? Well, you can say obj.embed, and then what you have to do is say, well, I do want to access a key, so you can mix and match, so you need to open and close your brackets, and then put in the number. This is very, very important that you do this. When I hit return, on that, pop in an ending semicolon, it gives me yup. Or I could write it obj, go fetch the embed object, which is stored inside of my embed property, so this object, and then I want to look inside of that object for the key with the name of one. So whenever you have key names that are actually numbers, you need to use your square brackets. Hit return, and you will notice that we get yup. So again, mix and match, play, have fun with this, experiment with this, and you will learn a tremendous amount. And one final thing, let's go three levels. So I'm going to say, all right, well, let's go and grab one, 
And in fact, let's make this a bit tricky for us. Let's change that yup string to another object. So now we're storing an object within the key one. So boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. Sort of seeing that analogy come to life. And then I have final key. So this object is only going to have one key, final key, and it's going to have the string done. That's it. So now I'm going to target OBJ. Then I'm going to, after targeting the main object, I want to target the embed object. So I say dot embed. Now we're targeting this object. So JavaScript looks at this object, says, aha, he wants to target embed. And now we want to get the inner object. Well, this inner object has a key name of one. So I need to put in my square brackets and say one. Now I can look inside of here and aha, there's another key. Now I have a choice. I can either pop in some square brackets here and then add in the string final key and hit return. And you'll notice we get done. So it went from OBJ right up here. This is OBJ. Then to embed. Then to one. And when I opened that up, it said, aha, there's another object. And finally, we said final key like that. If you wanted to keep that dot syntax going, but you just wanted to access one key, then all you need to do is get rid of that. Just pop in a dot. So after the square brackets, just pop in a dot. And there you go. You get the access again. But you must make sure you put in that dot right there. Otherwise, you will get an error. So that's something to bear in mind. Have a play around with it. Access multiple levels and try to throw yourself off a little bit. And also, if you are struggling, do it in steps. That's the best way to do things. So I can say OBJ. Ah, oh, that's my object. OBJ dot embed. Ah, that's that object. It's got uh, the value of one and level two. Ah, okay, now I understand. How do I get to one OBJ embed? And as this key is a value, I've got to put it in square brackets. There's one. All right, now I'm on another object. What do I do here? Well, I can either say dot final key or I can pop it in square brackets as you've seen and say final key. It really is up to you how you want to present your code and how you want it to look. But there you go, done. Nice and easy, very, very simple. So there you have it. You've now learned about objects. You've learned how to create properties or keys, smaller boxes. And don't forget, it's very, very similar to adding in methods. And I'm not going to show you how to cheat right now because I'm going to talk about functions in the next lecture. So in the next lecture, we'll take a look at functions and we'll also push that function into an object and even into an array.